Thanks very much, uh, Neil. Um, so my name is Neil Lipsman. I'm from the University of Toronto. I'm a neurosurgeon. So um, it's a pleasure to be here for a few reasons. One, um, I, I, a lot of our work is made possible by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. It would not be possible otherwise. And second, as a personal reason, uh, in, before this, you know, his life at, at the Focus Ultrasound Foundation, I knew Dr. Cassell purely by reputation as a trainee of uh, venerated Canadian neurosurgeon Charles Drake and also uh, from his uh, seminal contributions to uh, carotid surgery. Uh, so uh, it's a pleasure on many levels to be here uh, at his invitation. So thank you, Neil, for the invitation and for all the support. So uh, we're very privileged uh, at the University of Toronto to do the work that we do. Uh, and I just wanted to give you a glimpse of, of where we are now with Focus Ultrasound. Uh, what uh, to paint a picture of the vision uh, that we have for Focus Ultrasound in the next few years, how we see it fitting not only into the neuroscience landscape, but also into the general medical landscape, and some of the plans that we have going forward for Focus Ultrasound as it applies to, to the brain. So uh, as, a, as a first step, we need to set the stage. We need to put this in context and to describe the tremendous need that we have to develop novel approaches to brain illnesses. It's complex, it's a complex problem, a complex need, but I think you can summarize it in three words, serious, common, and expensive. That's what brain diseases are. So we know that uh, brain uh, dysfunction is a major cause of human disability and death. At least 50% of the World Health Organization's top causes of morbidity and mortality are related to brain-based disorders. Uh, these are common disorders, so uh, they occur uh, commonly in society. That you, you, you wouldn't be able to find somebody that hasn't been personally affected or hasn't taken care of a family member uh, who has had a brain-based disorder. Uh, so it's very common and, and it's expensive, both in terms of personal costs, public health costs especially. It's expected that the cost of Alzheimer's disease will top $1 trillion by the end of 2018. So there's a dramatic need, an urgent need to develop novel, uh, safe and effective treatments. But it's challenging to do that. Uh, why are these disorders, why are brain-based disorders so intractable, so difficult to treat, so challenging? Uh, here too, I think you can uh, distill a very complex problem down to a few key points. First is safety. We want to develop treatments that are safe. Uh, we want to make sure that the balance between the risks that we expose patients to and the benefits that they derive from those benefits is a good, healthy balance. Secondly is the issue of technology. So the last 20 or 30 years have seen rapid advances in our ability to diagnose treatments, to diagnose diseases, that is. So rapid advances in diagnosis, but we so far have not seen uh, congruent or equivalent advances in, in treatment, in therapies. And finally is the fact that the brain occupies a very privileged space in the body. Uh, it's protected by the blood-brain barrier. Uh, and we'll show you what that means in a moment. But this is a fundamental obstacle to uh, enhancing the delivery of therapeutic compounds to the brain. Focus Ultrasound in many respects uh, addresses each of these uh, challenges. So it's a non-invasive or it attempts to a less invasive treatment to optimize safety. It marries diagnostic technology and high resolution MR with treatment uh, and it also allows us to bypass the blood-brain barrier. So it really addresses in a direct way a lot of the challenges that we see in the field. So there's been interest in focus ultrasound for at least the last five or six decades. We see that in the medical literature. But we're now poised to make a substantial impact because of, uh, first of all, organizations like the Fuss Foundation, which fund our work. Uh, and also we're very privileged at Sunnybrook, where my institution, where we have a very uh, good technical and clinical background to bring a lot of this work to, to fruition. So what is it that we do? So this is a focused ultrasound helmet. So it contains over a thousand individual ultrasound transducer elements that we're able to focus in with sub-millimeter accuracy to any region of the brain that we want. So we can use ultrasound in two ways. We can use high frequency ultrasound to burn lesions, to make a lesion in the brain wherever we want again with sub-millimeter accuracy. And we can use lower frequency ultrasound together with micro microscopic bubbles that are injected into the bloodstream to open up the blood-brain barrier. So it's that ability to, to traverse or transgress the, the skull, the intact skull, with ultrasound, to focus it on, on the discrete regions that's led to, uh, as Dr. Cassell said, a, a renaissance in indications in the brain uh, for, for focused ultrasound. So you see many trials across the board uh, from pain, MS, all the way to movement disorders, cancer, and the major psychiatric disorders. There are clinical trials spanning all of these currently in development, and many of them at our own institution. 
But one of the areas that we're really poised to make a substantial impact on are the disorders where the blood-brain barrier is a significant obstacle to current treatments. You'll recognize in this list a select partial list of disorders where the BBB, the blood-brain barrier, is a major challenge. The, the major disorders that affect human beings in the 21st century. Everything from brain tumors, primary and secondary, to the major psychiatric disorders, to the neurodegenerative illnesses in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and ALS. So what is the blood-brain barrier? So the blood-brain barrier is a microscopic barrier. You can't see it uh, with your naked eye, but it has a profound impact on the environment in the brain. These are a cell, it's a cellular bar barrier that invests a lot of the fine blood vessels in the brain that prevents things that are inside the bloodstream from getting into the brain. A lot of the time, this is a good thing because a lot of the barrier that it imposes is predominantly a size barrier. So very large compounds, large molecules can't get into the brain. A lot of dangerous things in nature, poisons, etc., are large molecules and they can't have access to the brain as a result. The flip side of that is a lot of potentially good things can't get into the brain e either. Okay, so to illustrate that, this is an example of a mouse. Okay, this is a mouse that was injected with radioactive histamine 30 minutes before the mouse was sacrificed and stained. Histamine is a very small molecule and it readily stains every tissue in the body black. Okay, so you can see on this cross section of the mouse that every single tissue in this mouse's body is black except two, the brain and the spinal cord. That's because the brain and the spinal cord are protected by the blood-brain barrier and the blood-spinal cord barrier, so that it wasn't allowed to get into those areas. Histamine is a very small compound. Uh, something like Herceptin, which is used to treat uh, breast cancer, and the anti-amyloid antibodies that are used to treat Alzheimer's disease are thousands of times larger than histamine. So we may have effective treatments for uh, these conditions, but they just cannot get into the brain. So I mentioned that brain tumors uh, is one of those conditions for whom the brain, blood-brain barrier is a challenge. And in 2015, we treated our first patient uh, in Toronto uh, with focal blood-brain barrier opening. Uh, this is a patient with a malignant brain tumor with a glioblastoma multiforme. So this is the patient here on the upper left. Uh, we opened up a small region uh, of the adjacent to her tumor with, with focus ultrasound. So GBM or, or glioblastoma is one of, you know, we see it routinely as neurosurgeons, but it is an incredibly frustrating disease. It's a disease where we may have a pristine postoperative MRI. We can optimize patients with medical and radiation treatment, and invariably their tumor will return, uh, and these are almost uniformly fatal illnesses. A lot of that is due to the fact that by the time GBMs are diagnosed, it is a, is a brain-wide illness that extends well past what you can see on an MRI. So our approaches to these treatments, to these conditions, need to be treatments that give us access to regions of the brain that we don't currently have access to. Focus ultrasound, which opens up one of the privileged barriers of the brain, may allow us to do that. This is that patient's brain, and you can see in the right temporal lobe, I don't have a pointer, but you can see a dark area on the right temporal lobe there that is the tumor. And immediately behind the tumor, you can see a small grid of enhancement uh, and that is the region of the brain that we opened up the blood-brain barrier. This was a safety study. We want to demonstrate that it is safe to open the blood-brain barrier in these patients in an effort to design a subsequent study where we can combine focused ultrasound with effective, potentially effective chemotherapy regimens to have an influence on, on this disorder. And we're continuing this trial currently. Another area that we're very excited about is Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is um, the scourge of humanity in many respects. Uh, we've learned much in the last 20 or 30 years uh, about Alzheimer's, what it looks like under a microscope, what it looks like on an MRI scan, what it looks like in our genes. But so far, that knowledge has not translated into any effective treatments uh, in, in the natural history of Alzheimer's. Okay, so there are precious few medications that are approved by the FDA and Health Canada, but none of these make an appreciable difference in the long-term outcomes of Alzheimer's. We know that the blood-brain barrier is, challenge. this is challenging for Alzheimer's disease. We may have effective treatments, potentially, that may work in animal models, and they may even work in humans, but these are antibodies. These are anti-amyloid antibodies that go around, look for the amyloid that deposits in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, break it up, and flush it out of the brain. We cannot get these amyloid in sufficient concentrations into the brain. So this is where focused ultrasound may help. So we've now treated four patients uh, at the University of Toronto with early Alzheimer's disease and focal blood-brain barrier opening to see if we can safely open the blood-brain barrier in an effort to design subsequent studies where we combine 
BBB opening with an antibody. And this is the MRI scan of our uh, first patient. I direct your attention to the left MRI scan, especially in the right frontal lobe. The right frontal lobe is actually on the left side of the screen near the front. And you can see that on treatment day in the middle scan, what you see is a bright spot there in the right frontal lobe where you cannot, where you cannot appreciate that spot uh, on the baseline scan. When we scan the patient the next day, we see that spot is totally gone. Okay, so what we were able to do uh, is open up a discrete focal point in the blood-brain barrier. You coming to talk to me? There's a, there's a pointer? At the top, there you go. Okay. Okay, so there you go. That, that helps. Brain I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> I'm not, IT is not my forte, okay? okay. <laughs> Just a single button, okay. So, um, okay, so let's do that again. So if you look at the right frontal lobe over here, you see this is an MRI scan that was done 30 days before the patient was treated. There's no area of enhancement in this region. If you look on treatment day, what happened is we were able to uh, inject the patient with gadolinium and see an enhancing region in that same region. This is an area where we are able to open the blood-brain barrier in a five by five millimeter spot. We scan the patient the next morning with gadolinium and that spot is gone. So we were able to effectively open in a reversible fashion the blood-brain barrier, allowing gadolinium enhancement into this area, and it was in a reversible fashion such that it was no longer there the next day. The idea, if we, get, if, if we, if we demonstrate that this is in fact safe in these patients, is that we were, we'd be able to target areas of the brain that are critical for memory, critical for cognition, and potentially couple this kind of treatment with uh, potentially effective therapeutic compounds that may have an influence on, on Alzheimer's disease. So that is the brain of a patient with Alzheimer's. This is the person whose brain that belongs to. Uh, so I think that if you speak, uh, before you start it, I'll just mention that, um, you know, th this, is, this is one of our first, this, this is our first patient. And speaking to the patients, you realize really why we do the work that we do. So this is a 65-year-old gentleman, Mr. Carr. He's a retired truck driver. Um, he realized three years ago, his wife actually started to realize that he was forgetting his keys much more often, he was forgetting names, um, nothing really out of the ordinary, but it gradually got uh, uh, more and more serious, and eventually he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And when we approached him for uh, uh, participation in a clinical trial of its, of its very unique, which is a first in human trial, we don't know anything about its safety, we don't know anything about whether it will work, and he'll be the first patient ever to have this done, this is what he had to say. When I was asked about it, I, I, I didn't even hesitate. I said to uh, the doctor, said, yeah, I have no problem with that. I mean, and I do. I, it's, if I can help somebody down the road, I mean, because if, if it was reversed, I hope somebody would help me in the long run, right? So this is one of those things. But, you know, I get a little emotional about when I start talking about it because it's, it's uh, really close to my heart. I, re I really, when Marie asked me about it, uh, and, and, and then I said, you know something? I... Uh, truly believe that I would like to be known for, as somebody that helped somebody else down the road, eh, so. So uh, it's not, it's not uh, hard to see. We're tremendously inspired by people like uh, Mr. Carr, many others like him. So it's certainly the case that Alzheimer's is a relentless, uh, devastating illness, but uh, we have hope uh, because uh, that relentlessness is matched pound for pound by the drive and resolve of our patients. Uh, to make a difference and to participate in these trials. So we have tremendous hope that we can uh, make a difference. When so, I was asked about it. so we intend to be quite busy over the next few years. Um, in addition to the trials that we currently have ongoing for brain tumors and, uh, and Alzheimer's disease, uh, we have trials coming up for focused ultrasound in, in major depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, as well as in Parkinson's disease. And again, harnessing the technical and clinical expertise that exists at our institution, but also the, the incredible support that we receive from the Faust Foundation. We intend uh, no less really than to, to reinvent or invent the future of how we treat brain uh, disorders, uh, and ultimately going from brain therapy all the way down to repair. We want to move the dial. We want to make an impact on some of humanity's most urgent and challenging diseases. And that includes both phase one, first in human trials, all the way up to phase three and further trials where we try to establish whether indeed these, this technology, whether alone or in conjunction with other treatments, can be a part of standard of care. 
And it's really the versatility and the scalability of focus ultrasound as a treatment modality that we think is the key to, to, to why it's been such a disruptive force in brain therapy and such a powerful technology that is worthy of advertisements like this that our institution put out nationally across uh, uh, Canada in our daily uh, uh, national newspaper, the Globe and Mail, uh, to, to tout uh, the, the position that we believe focus ultrasound can have in the medical landscape. Thanks very much.